It's happening now. This is the content that inspires, informs, and enlightens. We're here to broaden your awareness, fuel your passions, and most importantly, to resource amongst ourselves so we can live better, more effectively, and on a direct course to our purpose. This is the Resource Center. I was a full-time student when I went to when I when I came out of high school I went straight to college I moved upstate New York I had that dorm experience where I lived in the school I had a roommate you know it was just a whole different type of life because I was living in the city but I was always like outgoing I had a lot of friends when I was in New York in the city and you know I used to go clubbing so I, I was always a networker and and a people person so I was able to you know, it's like there's only but certain personalities that repeat themselves in, in life. Like in the scriptures, in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, it speaks on there's nothing new under the sun. So you start seeing these type of personalities kind of repeat themselves. So I saw the same kind of personalities wherever I went. I was like, oh, I recognize that. I wouldn't, you know, stereotype, but it was so familiar. I'm like, okay, I, I recognize that type of personality. So I know what it is, you know, what to expect. And 99% of the times I was on point. Well, both personal and business are corporate fictions. I mean, I when I came out of school, and I want to bring that up because that's important to know how I got to this point, I, I did a lot of research on my own. I was always a researcher. I was never really a TV person or let me listen to the radio. I've always loved music, but I was always into reading and into my books. And my mom would tell you, she'd be like, oh yeah, she was always in a corner reading her books because I was always intrigued by the information that I was reading. So a lot of the things I learned about finances and about businesses and personal credit was a lot of on my own research, like learning law and learning banking and what is money. Like most people don't know what is money. Everybody's about, I got to get this money. I got to get this money. But what is money? Does it have any value to it? Do you, do you comprehend what it is? Well, I've, I've learned as, as an economic major when I was in school, they never taught me any of this. They always, they always made it look like it had some kind of value. Then when I came out of school, I started doing my own research and I found out that money really doesn't have any value. It's Federal Reserve notes that's not backed by gold or silver. So most people think that that, that that has some kind of value, although we do exchange it as a means of exchange. But getting deeper into that, I started understanding that debts are fictitious. Debts are not real. So people would be like, well, wait a minute. Somebody did loan me something. I did buy a car. I bought a house. Or, uh, or, I, or I just got a credit card and got approved for $10,000. So how did I, I didn't get something? I said, well, there's something going on behind the scenes that most people don't understand, okay? So for example, uh, when you get some kind of promissory note or when you get a credit card and you, and you sign your signature, your signature is what has value because it's connected to your birth certificate. Your birth certificate has, is actually printed on stock paper, if you analyze that, and it has a certain number to it. And it even has, some of them have barcodes. They're actually traded as a commodity. And people don't know this. I mean, the minute you're born and your parents sign the birth certificate, when vital statistics are knocking at your, at your hospital door, like, you know, your mother's like partially, you know, tired from pushing the baby out, coming there like, sign, 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 because they, that's really how they get you to become a slave, how you become a corporate fiction. So when you look at your birth certificate, your name is in capital letters. It's not, it's, it's in all in capital letters. That's like a corporation that they've created in your name, but your parents are looking at it, oh yeah, that's my new baby, but really it's something that they've created and attach it to a social security and number and that number is a nine digit number that's attached to a federal reserve bank in the united states and that's how that's how they generate fiat currency or federal reserve notes and you become a slave you be you thinking in your mind and notice every time you apply for things they're always asking for the same thing whether it's an employer an employer asking for your social or irs or if you apply for a, a credit card or some kind of loan you're getting what what they're doing is is they're tapping into that corporate fiction that you're claiming to be which you're not so they create a bank account behind the scenes in your name and that's why they need your signature because now you're giving them consent to go ahead and for example if you decide to borrow 
allegedly a a uh, one hundred thousand dollars, okay, from any banking institution. That those that they never come with briefcases and say, hey, here, relentless. Here's a hundred. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. You never see that. It's all on paper that you've signed, and it's like some kind of credit that's created. It's like an illusion, right? Because nobody's bringing you these actual Federal Reserve notes in that amount. So you're borrowing allegedly, and you sign. All right. When you have a contract, there's supposed to be two signatures, but you only see one. It's yours. So they've created a whole identity, and behind the scenes, they have created an account where they can generate 10 times the amount on that face value. So out of that 100,000, that banking institution can generate a million dollars. That's an example of what's going on. And you, you have no idea that this is happening. This is happening behind the scenes. So there's a lot to it, it's very deep. And that's what got me intrigued. I said, wow, this is, this is crazy because here I am, I study this financing stuff that I thought I knew from school, college, but it was not really, it was false information because a lot of it was not told or exposed. I did a lot of digging and researching and found out that debts are fictitious and we, we really don't owe anybody anything because Federal Reserve notes have no value. And we've been in, in the United States of America has been in a bankruptcy situation since 1933.